In this episode, I'm gonna talk about why grains are bad for autoimmune disease, part two. If you have not yet watched the part one of why grains are bad for autoimmune disease, I will put it up uh, here or here. I don't know where it goes. It's one of these places. Uh, so you can go watch it. And it explains how lectins are really uh, one of the major components of why grains can be problematic for those of us with autoimmune disease. But today I wanted to talk about part two, which are the other parts of grains that can really cause problems for those of us with autoimmune disease or for those of us that are susceptible to it. So these other things are digestive enzyme inhibitors and phytates or phytic acid. And digestive enzyme inhibitors are bad for pretty much anyone because of how, like what the name implies. They inhibit digestive enzymes. And you can imagine, we need digestive enzymes. Uh, they help break down particles of food and uh, proteins and everything into the amino acids and everything that we need to be able to live uh, for our minerals and nutrients. I mean, just pretty much break everything down into the particles our bodies can use. But if you recall from part one, I talked about how grains and seeds, and since grains are seeds, um, they want to be passed through our bodies so that they can be planted somewhere in fertile soil and grow. So it behooves them to not have to get digested. Now, if you swallow a seed whole where you're not chewing it and not breaking it down, so like say inside of a fruit or something like that, it's going to have its protective barrier and it's gonna go, it travel through you and then when you poop it out, it. I know you're gonna probably poop in the toilet, but you know, like if you were an animal or something, you would poop it out into the, the ground and then eventually it would grow into a plant. Um, however, when you ground or chew these particular kind of seeds um, down, the digestive enzyme inhibitors get out. And that's what really wreaks the havoc in your body. So first of all, they're considered to be anti-nutrients, which uh, means that the body cannot uh, absorb the nutrients that it needs, like the micronutrients. And so that's bad news. And then it also stimulates more digestive enzyme production from our pancreas, which puts undue stress onto the pancreas, which also causes us not to be able to absorb as many minerals. And then the pancreas cannot really secrete like selectively the certain kind of digestive enzymes that it needs. So it just creates every kind that it needs. And this kind of causes a gut imbalance. And um, because of the gut imbalance, then we have certain kind of foods that are not being broken down properly. Um, it irritates the gut lining, which causes leaky gut. Um, it, uh, the raveling, unraveling of the um, proteins that help line our gut um, happens because of this. And then because we're not actively digesting the proteins and everything that we need to be from the food particles as we should, there are larger food particles moving through our gut, which are going to preferentially tr like feed some gut bacteria that we may not want. So it might result in gut dysbiosis and SIBO and just a number of other things. And they have done some studies that have shown that the presence of these inhibitors can increase inflammation all on its own. Um, this has been studied mainly in the case of celiac disease, but if you have other autoimmune diseases, it may be something to keep in mind. And then the other thing that we're going to discuss today are phytates or phytic acid. And these actually bind to minerals and nutrients in the body and just kind of go through the body and take them out, which you can imagine is bad, especially when you are not absorbing things properly. And we need as many nutrients as we possibly can especially in the case of autoimmune disease, to make sure that our bodies, um, our immune systems especially, are regulating itself and not producing autoantibodies that are gonna attack our own tissues. Now, the problem with phytic acid really is one of those things that if you have excessive consumption. So if you are eating a standard American diet with a lot of grains, and nuts and seeds and all these things that have phytates in them, you're gonna have much more of a problem than someone on like a paleo style diet because you're not gonna get as much in the way of phytates. I mean, if you eat a lot of nuts and seeds, so if you're eating a lot of almond flour baked goods and stuff, you may have to start kind of worrying about this, but it's not as much as if you were eating grains for every meal. Phytates are similar to the digestive enzyme inhibitors in that they can be devastating to the gut flora um, and then also preferentially feeding other gut flora as well as the gut lining. So 
they're not necessarily like the worst of the grain problem, but they are something to, to um, be aware of. There have been people that have said that you can soak your grains to get rid of the phytic acid or phytates and to a certain part, the lectins. However, this is a little bit of a controversial practice. There haven't really been any major studies that have said that they actually do remove all of these. So it's kind of playing roulette with your health. If you think that soaking your grains are really going to make you not have these effects, um, especially in the context of autoimmune disease. It may help a little bit and it may be something that like will push you over the, the line to be able to eat them if you don't have autoimmune disease. But if you do, it's just, I, personally, I just don't like the idea of taking that chance with my health because there are so many issues with grains that I feel like maybe just one little part of it being removed is not going to help me enough to not get a leaky gut and um, gut dysbiosis and everything just from consuming consuming grains. So I try to avoid them as much as I possibly can. doesn't mean that I don't eat them ever. I do have them on occasion, but I do stay away from gluten because as we discussed in video number one, most of the studies and all of the things that they say are the really the worst out of grains have come from the studying gliadin component of gluten. So even though I'm celiac, I mean, I'm not going to have gluten anyway, but if you have autoimmune disease, I think gluten is the number one thing that you should remove. And then if you want to experiment with other grains every so often, then that's some, a personal preference and something to try. Um, just keep all of these things in mind. And if you start to notice negative symptoms after a period of time, after including them into your diet, it may be something to look at and to take out. So hopefully that helps you understand why grains are bad in the context of autoimmune disease and why they may be potentially problematic for you. And if you have included them into your diet, why you may be still suffering symptoms. If you have them in your diet and you're not suffering symptoms, then great, keep at it and do what you're doing because obviously you're, they're not affecting you. But if you have symptoms and you're trying to figure out why, they may be the number one culprit to look at. And if you're still suffering symptoms, even though you've taken grains out, but still have dairy, beans, and nightshades in your diet, um, those could potentially be some of the culprits because they do share a lot of properties that are similar to grains. But we'll discuss those in a later video. All right, I think that's enough science for today. I, I know it can get a little complicated and I'm hoping I'm breaking it down enough. I'm trying to make it so you can understand it. And I mean, I have to read through all of these texts and things that I have several times to really kind of understand it and then translate it into normal speak instead of blah, 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 medical stuff, which can get really complicated. But hopefully I'm doing a good enough job. Let me know if you still have questions or if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff and make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more of this and sign up to get the password from my free paleo library, which has all kinds of resources to make your paleo whole 30 and AIP diets work perfectly for you. So uh, I have the link for that below and I will see you next time.